Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this morning is the epistle reading from Ephesians chapter 6. If we think back millennia ago to that day in the garden when Adam and Eve hid themselves, the Lord God called out to the man and he said to him, Where are you? Before the aftertaste of that forbidden fruit had faded, the eyes of man and woman had been opened. They knew they were naked, and so they hid themselves. But you and I have not come from a place so very far from that. And the same question still echoes. Where are you? The Lord God calls to us, where are you? But the universe whispers around us, With every sunrise, with every rainfall, where have you been hiding? Our own hearts, be that in success or regret, in hopes or in hurts, our hearts ponder, where are you going? Like a parent whose ears perk up at the sudden silence upstairs, what are you doing? Or like a cell phone that rings a half hour after curfew. Where are you? Ever since the fall of man with the trespass of Adam, the garden in once we once lived has now been made a jungle. The Word of God places us very firmly next to the skeletons of Adam and Eve. St. Paul finds us right alongside the Ephesians, struggling, hiding behind whatever low-hanging brambles we can scrape up, hunkering under any bit of forest floor that we can string together. We are still struggling. As St. Paul writes, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. The world in which we live occupies an intersection of man and monster, the epicenter of fight and suffer, of kill or be killed. Our life inhabits that edge of death and hell itself. The gauntlets of sin and survival live and let die. Now you can sit fences around politics. You can even remain silent about controversies. But there remain rules. And fighting something with nothing fails nonetheless. For no matter how far or how fast you run, you will not escape. You cannot slip beyond the reaches of God's mighty arms. But we have pains, pains so sharp that we mutilate our bodies to match the pain on the inside to pains on the out. We bear needs so deep that we idolize animals and we imitate their appetites. We wear eyes that are so hungry and mouths that are so angry that we squeeze the trigger and open fire before we even see if someone is a friend or a foe. And we carry grief and guilt that is so haunting, so consuming, That we are wont to believe that freedom comes in ending our own lives. 
We haul about us fears that are so chilling and failures so choking that we tolerate terminating our sons and daughters and we advocate euthanizing our mothers and fathers. We hold hearts that are so broken and so divided that we accept lust rather than aspire to love. And we drag underbellies so vulnerable and blind sides so exposed that we actually separate children from marriage. We walk about with spines so stiff and skin so hard that we settle for human rights instead of insisting upon heaven's gifts. We host consciences so ruthless and demons so legion that we substitute autonomy for community. Here is where we stand. Yet where we are isn't half as horrifying as who we are. Who we are makes it all the worse. For the Lord God created mankind our males and our females, in his own image. Father, Son, and Spirit made us a little lower than the heavenly beings, but the crowning jewel of all creation. We should know better, but our flesh and our blood lies fallen. Our bodies and our spirits have been left broken. We have become both victim and culprit. We have grown compromised, conditioned by a culture that accepts, that seeks, that promotes death. We have gotten ourselves impaired, captive to sinful desires and selfishness, whatever state or shape or stage, from fertilization to final breath, heartbeat, and brainwave. Nobody comes holier or worthier than the rest. No life proves more qualified or dignified than another. None of us stands isolated and independent from one another or harmlessly affecting only ourselves. We arrive, we exist, and we expire as neighbors by nature brothers and sisters by birth, whether we like those people or not. And so we all require armor. We all require a savior, deliverance, and redemption. And we all crave compassion, forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Here we stand. But we do not stand alone. We never stand alone. In fact, you don't get to stand alone, but nor do you have to stand alone. Another one stands in your place. He has armor. He brings armor. He gives armor because he himself is armor. Christ Jesus is armor the armor of God, the whole armor of God for you and for all people. And he shelters, he sustains, he protects, he defends any who have not and cannot stand, protect, or shelter themselves. The Lord will fight for you. You have only to be still. Fear not, stand firm. And behold the salvation the Lord works for you. Christ's brow arrays fallen man's helmet with God's paradise opening incarnate presence that reaches you even in pain and need. His weeping eyes outfit we who are compromised with a visor of God's account balancing obedient servanthood Servanthood that touches you, especially in hunger or in anger. The naked breast of Christ clothes the conscience-laden spirit. 
with God's criminal forgiving peace that takes from you your grief and guilt. The outstretched arms of Christ cover the unborn with a sleeve of God's victim-favoring faithfulness that rescues from fear and failure. His pierced hands drape the elderly with the glove of God's punishment-suffering passion that releases from broken hearts or burning lusts. And the bare shoulders of Christ Dress those impaired with God's wrath-satisfying righteous sacrifice like a shield that liberates you from your pride, your misguided priorities, from lies, from faltering plans and failing capacities. His punctured heart wraps the raw being with God's wrong-redeeming redemption like a jacket that frees you from having to keep score. His bruised heel equips those who are abandoned with God's debt-settling salvation like boots that stare, spare you from abusing, from using, from taking advantage of one another. And the torn flesh of Christ endows all who are bedeviled with God's unconditionally accepting truth like chain mail that embraces you out of sin and out of death. And his shed blood covers all who are vulnerable with God's life-justifying word, like medicine that cradles you away from the devil and from hell. Because Christ stands here, here we stand. Every human being is precious at every stage and in every state, no matter what you've done, no matter what you cannot do. Christ is why we stand, and we stand in Christ with the many blessings of abundant and everlasting life. We see where we stand because he shows us. We face who we are because he declares it. And we know why we stand, because he shares that. And now we know how we're here, because he demonstrates that as well. We stand upon the promises of God's own word, not under popular opinion or conventional wisdom. We stand together because the church's ministry and brotherhood, not because of cultural impulses, or bandwagons. You stand claimed and positioned in baptism, crowned and preserved through this holy communion, and we stand together through grace rather than atop works, amid faith instead of atop feelings. Here we stand since the creation of the world until the second coming of our Lord Christ Jesus. Here we stand between the multitudes of faithful Christians across all time and the millions of forgiven children all around the world. Here we stand in the Holy Spirit alongside Christ Jesus and behind God our Father. Here we stand neither stampeding nor strutting. We stand in joy, not out of anger, in hope, not out of fear, because we stand to forgive, not to compare, to save, not to compete. We stand to relieve and to release, not to accuse. We stand to listen, to assist, to accompany, to embrace, to befriend, never to attack. Here we stand speaking truth and sharing love because we stand overcoming sin and selfishness. We stand overcoming death and the devil. We stand together 
not against. And we stand firm, but we stand gentle. We stand strong, but we stand humble. Even after so long, and even before such insurmountable odds, here we stand, gospel-motivated voices, Lutherans for life, because, because simply we can do no other. God help us. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.